Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to Your Stocks. I'm Pavitra Parekh. With me is Ekta Batra. There's just no respite for the market, right? It is a through and through down day that we are seeing. In fact, we're at the low point of the day right now. Around 270 points gone on the Nifty, so 1.5% lower over there. The selling pressure has just intensified in the past uh, you know, few minutes as well. So we're now at 15,556 on the Nifty. The pressure is worst in the banking space, right? So take a look at the Nifty Bank. That's down almost 690 points right now. Uh, so that one clearly looking the weakest. Even if you look at the mid-cap index, that is also seeing sharp cuts right now, 1.2% lower there. But Ekta, across the board, selling pressure seen all sectoral indices in the red as well. Hi, uh, Pavitra. Yes, absolutely. You know, the India VIX has spiked up around 11 odd percent at this point in time, at 11 and a half odd percent to be uh, precise. So that's the volatility index. And uh, from noon till now, there's been a worsening which has taken place in the advanced yeah. decline ratio, which completely ties in with the fact that this is broad base weakness that we're seeing. To put that into context, we have 481 stocks which are advancing on the National Stock Exchange and over 2,300 stocks which are declining at this point in time also to illustrate this better within the nifty we have only two stocks which are in the green at this point ITC from the FMCG space which has any which way been an outperformer and Divi's lab from the pharmaceutical space which is up just about marginally so there is broad based weakness there is no sector which is left out in terms of losses but joining us this afternoon we have Sharad Avasti who is the head of PCG research and SMIFS and Kush Bora who is the founder at kushbora.com uh, welcome to the show Kush you know before we start taking a lot of the queries wanted your thoughts in terms of the technicals of the market because now we're testing 17,500 on the nifty we've broken that 20 day moving average uh, what is your sense in terms of where we would go from now especially in conjunction with the financials um, sure. First up, <clears throat> thank you for having me on the show, and you know we're starting the show on the right foot, I assume, because uh, you know this was uh, fairly evident uh, in the morning. You know we uh, we uh, opened below seventeen eight hundred, which was a very strong support zone. The index had been trying to hold on to that for a very long time, and we never saw any kind of respite after that. So uh, my uh, worry is that you know if the seventeen thousand five hundred mark, where we have the second highest put base psychologically plus technically, it's a very strong uh, support zone. If we don't hold on to this one, then I'm afraid the next level that we're looking at is seventeen. Uh, you know, 300, 17, 350 with the 200 DMLIs. And also we've bounced back a couple of times from there. Financials, uh, you know, could actually uh, lead the, you know, the markets on the downside because the, the uh, there's no respite, you know. If you see the PCR for Bank Nifty for this expiry, it's already close to 0 0.5. And, you know, anywhere from 0 0.7, we see markets bounce back. We've not seen that. So we could perhaps see a meaningful, uh, you know, a short covering rally. But I would also use this opportunity to, you know, sell into both the indices for now. All right. Uh, in fact, the Nifty Bank has breached the 40,000 mark as well, uh, with us losing nearly 670 points. So that is something that we're watching very closely. We'll talk more about the markets, but let's also kickstart the show now by bringing you all of our queries because we have lots of them to get through. Narayan writes to us from Mumbai. He says he has nine shares of Nestle India at 15,950. He's been holding since 2020. He says he's a long-term investor. He's already held for you know a significant period of time, but he wants to know what he should do with these investments. Uh, with the Nestle stock now, should he hold or should he sell? Um, let me come to you first on this, Kosh. Currently, it's at 18,770. He's made good money on this, but the question is, do you see um, scope for a lot more to, you know, for a lot more in terms of returns on Nestle? He is willing to hold for a long period as well. And Patra, I'm glad we're starting off, uh, you know, the session with a question or with a stock like Nestle, because this is a stock for all seasons. You know, it may have its share of volatility, and you know, it's probably corrected a little from you know 21,000 uh, levels. And I say little in terms of you know how what kind of a wealth creator this has been. Uh, but for me, Nestle, uh, you know, looks like a stock which is you know a buy across all seasons. Now, if and plus, given that uh, you know his view is long term, these kind of tips should actually be used to buy into you know such stocks. Uh, it's broken down below its uh, you know 200 day moving average which is close to 18900 so there could be persistent weakness but as i said you know this is a time to you know add and accumulate these stocks gradually so uh, you know look at buying this stock even at you know, even if it falls to uh, 18500 400 zones which is a very strong support zone for this stock uh, for a view of about you know next 2 to 3 years i wouldn't be surprised if the stock zooms uh, you know again to 20000 and 21000 levels which it has very recently uh, you know uh, touched 
Okay, Sharad, would you be of that opinion as well in the next two to three years based on the fundamentals it could reach levels of around 20 to 21,000 for Nestle? Yeah, I think next year we are expecting decent growth. Uh, we are expecting uh, the earnings to uh, go up by around 15, 16 percent uh, to around 350, 360. Uh, if they can continue that momentum and rural growth also picks up and urban India also picks up and they can continue to grow at that rate, uh, then maybe that target is possible. But in terms of valuation, it still is roughly 55, 56 times forward. And the way these stocks have behaved over the last one and a half, two years where the multiples have gone really haywire, prior to that, they were usually trading at 40, 50 times, which is uh, reasonable given the consistency with which they uh, compound the earnings and all that. But uh, trading at above 50 forward earnings, I think it makes uh, little sense. Uh, it would make more sense uh, if he's a very long-term investor, three to four years, he can hold. But uh, the upsides might be very limited. Maybe something like a, a Zydus Wellness or something like a Jyoti Labs would would be I would have provide much better returns over a three to four year horizon vis-a-vis -vis Nestle. Okay, so maybe you will look towards more broader market stocks. Uh, so that's the view coming in on Nestle. Uh, we do have a caller now. We have Somashikar Ji who calls us from Bangalore with a question. He has investments in Z, Entertain Z Entertainment and Zydus Life. Uh, hi, sir. Go ahead. Oh, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Good yeah, afternoon, yeah, brother. I have under shares of Z TV and also this uh, Julia Life is looking under shares of 570 and 343 is the Z TV. Okay, all what right. What is the long term prospect of this uh, script, ma'am? Okay, so you're sitting on a loss on both of these as of now. But when you say long term, how how much time are you willing to hold these for? More than three years. Okay, so you have a more than three year perspective when it comes to both these stocks, Z as well as Zydus. Uh, Sharad, over to you because you briefly mentioned Zydus right now. If you could uh, give more details. Um, our caller is a long term shareholder. He's willing to hold Z as well as Zydus for three years plus sitting on losses. See, Z has had its uh, corporate governance issues and uh, the pledge issue because of which there have been a lot of volatility in the prices. Uh, but if you look at the numbers now, I believe uh, next two years, the growth should be very decent. The ad revenues, etc., have rolled in very nicely. The merger with Sony should also be very beneficial and uh, they should be one of the larger OTTs on Hindi entertainment basically. So that could be a place to watch out and valuations per se are not expensive. FI25 we are expecting earnings to be somewhere around 16 rupees. So 10-15 times I don't know last time when I bought a media stock. So uh, I think that's a very decent story and once the merger goes through he has the time on his side. He's willing to wait two to three years. I think he can easily target somewhere around uh, 400 plus on the stock over a period of next two to three years. So see, he should continue to hold. Uh, there are a bit of corporate governance risk, but I am assuming that uh, post m and that would also get uh, resolved largely. Uh, on Zydus uh, Life Science, I think again, uh, one of the larger pharma companies in the country, uh, some of the biosimilar and uh, uh, products that they have on the table, if that comes through, earnings growth could be much higher. Uh, right now, the expectation is that earnings growth would be somewhere around 15, 16%. So based on that, on forward multiples, if it trades at around somewhere around 25, 20, 25 times, uh, he could hold on to uh, Zydus for a target of somewhere around uh, 600 rupees. All right, got it. Let me also bring Kush in on this. Kush, uh, your thoughts on Z Entertainment as well as Zydus. If I can ask you about Zydus first, you know, it looks like he got in at quite a high price, but this stock has not done badly. I mean, even if you look at a one-year chart or so, it is up around uh, around 26%. Well, uh, you know, I think he's not had a chance to exit this stock because the fall has been fairly sharp. Now, uh, the good thing is that, you know, the stock's already made a very strong base at around 350, you know, 360 zones. And then it's, you know, attempting a very clear rebound. Now, this rebound could very well take the stock to 550 levels, which is close to his price. So my uh, view on Zydus would be hold on to this uh, with a strict uh, stop loss of 440. In case that breaks, uh, you know, he should perhaps exit that because structurally, the stock will again go into a weakish territory. But, uh, you know, if that does hold on, 
then he could see a run up to you know 530 550 zones this will actually be a very significant uh, recovery from the losses that he's currently making uh, speaking about z well i'm not as optimistic you know as uh, sharad sounded just now it's broken its recent lows uh, you know uh, 208 was its recent low it's already uh, very close to that or probably just breached it intraday so i'm not very uh, gung ho on z i know it's a deep loss but it'll he'll you know perhaps be better off exiting uh, z at least Okay, all right. Some pessimism coming in on Z, and there's definitely pessimism which is coming in on the markets because all of the indices are down over a percent at this point. We have the Sensex, which is showing an almost thousand point cut, 1.6 percent shed off on the Sensex. We have the Nifty, which is down around 1.6 percent, and the Bank Nifty, which has extended its losses to an over 700 cut at this point. So it is the Bank Nifty constituents, all of them, which are in the red as we speak. In fact, uh, the top loser on the bank Nifty is PNB, which is down around 2.5%. The likes of HDFC Bank, State Bank of India, Bank of Baroda, all of these stocks showing cuts of anywhere between a percent to close to 3 odd percent. So that's what's taking place. And that is really the pain point for our markets today. Ashwin, uh, that's another query that we have. And um, coincidentally, it is within the banking space. Ashwin Sridhar writes to us from Chennai. He holds 6,674 shares of PNB or Punjab National Bank, which he's bought at 44.95 rupees. He wants to know whether to hold or sell at current level. So he's currently in the money. Uh, it would be interesting to get your perspective on a technical as well as fundamental basis. Uh, Sharad, let's come to you on the fundamentals. Uh, do you think that he should probably sell out because last year was great for PSU banks, but now there is a, you know, there's a possibility that uh, banks could underperform on worries of what could happen to their asset quality this year. So what is your thought on PNB? Do you think it's a good time to probably just take the profits and leave? Uh, no, I think after this uh, decent correction across the banking spectrum, uh, banks where uh, uh, there is not much risk of uh, GNP additions because advances growth have not picked up over the last two, two and a half years. So generally, the GNP cycle should follow a robust advanced growth cycle. So unless and until there is a very strong advanced growth cycle, we do not expect any kind of major GNP additions to any of the banks. Uh, Post-merger, this has become the largest bank, third largest bank in the country, most probably. So uh, they would be in a sweet spot. And I think with the advances growth coming in, uh, Q4 numbers were, Q3 numbers were a bit of a disappointment. But uh, forward numbers should continue to maintain. So even if it trades at somewhere around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 forward book value of 85, 90 rupees, I think he should continue to hold for a target of around uh, 70, 75 on the stock. Okay, continue to hold PNB. Kush, what do you think? Uh, do you also agree that this is perhaps a good stock to keep holding? I mean, this month, of course, has been pretty bad for a PNB, but pretty much for the entire banking space, right? Well, and you know, as I said, the uh, banking stocks or the finance stocks in general have been the ones leading the uh, you know uh, index and Nifty also down, the markets also down. So there could be some uh, pressure, uh, you know, uh, in the days to come as well. Uh, speaking specifically about PNB, well, the stock has not seen any kind of meaningful recovery uh, since it started, you know, falling from 60 levels mid-Jan. Now, my concern is that, you know, this could perhaps accelerate. 48 was a very strong support zone, which it, it has breached and it's trading below that today. Uh, the best thing is from a strategy perspective that the gentleman is still in a profit. His buying price was 45 rupees. So uh, the best uh, way to play this out would be to you know keep a trailing stop loss of 45 or a little above 45.5 and hold on. If that level is taken out, then there's a chance that you know uh, the stocks could go further down uh, right up till you know 40 levels. So my suggestion would be you know hold on to this from uh, you know a strategy perspective as you know with the stop loss of 45 or 45.5. If this does turn around, then I wouldn't be surprised to see a level of uh, 51 and the second level of 54, uh, you know, on this stock. But okay. uh, in, uh, Kush, hold with just a, a Kush, just a quick uh, word on the Nifty Bank, which in fact has slipped below 40,000 on an intraday basis currently. Uh, how would you approach it? Well, you know, this is a very tricky situation for two reasons. I mean, you can't go short at, you know, this current level because the nearest, uh, the, the most immediate support is at 39,800. Now, psychologically, this looks very uh, bleak that, you know, we've broken uh, 40,000, but, uh, you know, you can't go short right now. So my suggestion would be just hold on to, uh, you know, any existing short positions that you may have from, you know, with the trailing stop loss of 4,020 levels, uh, 40,200 levels rather. But otherwise, just hold on for a couple of days. Don't take any fresh positions. The, uh, the index itself is entering, you know, oversold 
oversold territories. So we might see a bit of a rebound. And as I said, even the PCR is indicating a bit of an oversold territory. So we might see a rebound. But that rebound will perhaps be an opportunity to make fresh shots. All right, that is the call on the Nifty Bank. All of the constituents of that index in the red right now. The you know overall index is down 1.9 percent, so the loss is only intensifying right now. It's been uh, you know a 750 point fall that we've seen on the Nifty Bank. We will get into a short break on the show now, but there's lots more market action that we are tracking on the other side. Welcome back. Well, it is looking like a tough screen at this point. We've shed off around 300 points for the Nifty. We have the Bank Nifty, which is shed off around 750 points at this point. We've been talking about how there is complete weakness which is coming into the financials. Even stocks such as Yes Bank has lost around 3-odd percent at this point in time. City Union Bank, which definitely had concerns in the previous quarter, has shed around 2-odd percent. So it is across the board in terms of financials and the other section of stocks which continue to deplete in terms of market capitalization is Adani Power and the Adani stock. So Adani Power, case in point, is down around 5-odd percent. It's down 45 percent on a year-to-date basis. Within the Nifty stocks, we have Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports, which have lost 6% and 10% respectively. So the Adani stocks should come up for you. And just to put um, more emphasis in terms of the financials, we have HDFC Bank, which has lost around 2 percent State Bank of India, which is at the low point of the day. And other heavyweights such as Reliance, l &T, which are not really managing to support the index as well. So both these heavyweights are also down around 2 percent The advanced decline ratio has now now worsen to around 1 is to over 5 stocks declining on the National Stock Exchange and stands at around 1 is to 3 on the Bombay Stock Exchange. That gives you a picture in terms of the kind of weakness we have in our markets. Let's see what the FIIs do because yesterday they were buyers in the cash market. Let's see whether or not that would sustain or not in today's trade. But we still have with us Sharad Avasti who is joining in on the fundamentals, Kush Pura who is talking to us about the technicals. Uh, Kush, just quickly coming to you, uh, how would you approach a couple of the stocks within the FMCG and uh, maybe in the pharmaceutical space which are managing to be resilient at this point? Case in point would be an ITC. Well, look, not everything will look bleak. You know, there will be pockets. My only concern is that, you know, those pockets will, uh, you know, keep shrinking. You know, there'll be, uh, you know, very few and far in between. ITC is one such uh, stock. I mean, you know, we've seen the kind of run-up that, you know, it's uh, shown in the last year, year and a half. And even now, the relative strength is pretty, uh, you know, evident. I would use all the opportunities, you know, that come along my way for, uh, you know, accumulating more of, you know, such stocks. You know, beat ITC with the one other name that I like is Britannia. I know the stock is perhaps, uh, you know, not as, you know, in the same league as, you know, ITC at the moment. But even Britannia has shown quite a bit of strength. So these are a couple of names. Pharma, the pockets get even smaller because, you know, given the diversity of the entire space, uh, we'll need to be very selective. So, you know, maybe a couple of hospital counters or maybe something like a Cipla and Sun Pharma is something that, you know, I would keep on my radar just to accumulate at lower levels. So purely defensive play. But one other uh, sector that I have on my radar as a defensive play is the capital goods. Uh, you know, you take a case in point, which is, you know, l and Simmons, Cummins. Today, they might be looking, uh, you know, bleak, you know, given the market scenario. But this is one sector that I will have my, uh, you know, eyes on even as a defensive bet. You know, uh, when the markets fall, these are the stocks that I would look to accumulate. Okay, got that. Um, you know, one other very small pocket of green in this market is perhaps some of the air conditioner, air cooler makers today, right, on uh, news that the heat wave is advancing uh, faster than expected. Sharad, coming to you on this, how would you look at some of these, say, a Blue Star, Symphony? Do you think any of these are worth uh, looking at right now? Uh, Blue Star might have run up a bit too much, but the other three, four stock Symphony is still not very expensive in terms of valuation. Uh, Voltas uh, has been a top pick of mine and uh, Whirlpool also at these valuations is a very decent bet in the long term. 
and the fastest growth we expect over the next 10 12 year horizon is to be in the air conditioning space only so uh, voltas whirlpool symphony all of them should work very well uh, we are more bullish on the prospects of uh, voltas or a whirlpool which we hold in our pms as well uh, but even symphony should be a very decent bet from here on Okay, well, it is getting hotter and it's getting redder for the markets. But uh, with that, it's a wrap on the show. Sharad, as well as Kush, thank you very much for joining in and taking us through all of the queries. Uh, but do remember, uh, viewers, that you can email us your queries and we will address them with our experts. Stay tuned. Closing bell will take you through the last hour of trade.